everything is ready for the Christians. For the Christians? <laughs> Thank you. 
examine it carefully before you speak. The happiness of more than one life depends on your answer. It seems to be mine. Yes, here is the injury it received through the upsetting of a Gower Street omnibus in younger and happier days. Oh, and there is the stain on the lining caused by the explosion of a temperance beverage, an incident that occurred in Leonard. Oh, and there are the lucky of my initials. Oh, I have forgotten that in a moment of extravagance I have a place there. Oh, the bag is undoubtedly mine. I am delighted to have it returned to me so unexpectedly. It has been a great inconvenience being without it all these years. It was prison. More is restored to you than this handbag. I was the infant you placed in it. You? Yes, mother! I'm married. I do not deny that it's a serious blow. <laughs> but after all, who has the right to cast a stone against one who has suffered? Cannot repentance wipe out an act of folly? And why should there be one law for men and another for women? Oh, mother, I forgive you! It's no Lady Brown, I hate to seem inquisitive, <laughs> but would you kindly inform me who I am? Then you read the news that I have to tell you. We're not altogether pleased with you. You are the son of my poor sister, Mrs. Moncrief, and consequently, Algernon's elder brother. I just have a brother. But then I have a brother after all. I knew I had a brother. I always said I had a brother. Cecily, how could you ever have doubted that I had a brother? Dr. Shazel, my unfortunate brother. Miss Prism, my unfortunate brother. Gwendolyn, my unfortunate brother. Oh, Algie, you dumb scoundrel. <clears throat> You'll have to treat me with more respect in the future. You've never treated me like a brother in your life. Not until today, old boy, I admit. I did my best, however. I was out of practice. Can I end? Gwendolyn. on the subject of my name is irrevocable, I suppose. I never change, except in my affections. What a noble nature you have, Wendelin. Well, then the matter had better be cleared up at once. Lady Br Aunt Augusta, <laughs> when I was deposited in the handbag, had I been christened? Every luxury that money could buy, including christening, had been lavished on you by your fond and doting parents. Then I was christened, that much is settled. Very well then. What name was I given? Let me know the worst. Being the eldest son, naturally, you christened after your father. Yes, but what was his Christian name? I came to the prison, but would recall what the general's Christian name was. I no doubt he had one. He was eccentric, I admit, but only in later years. And that was as a result of the Indian chocolate and milk, indigestion, <laughs> other things of that kind. Algie, can't you remember our father's Christian name? I'm afraid not, old boy. We were never even on speaking terms. He died before I was a year old. But his name would appear in the army this is the period, I suppose, Aunt Augusta. The general was essentially a man of peace, except in his domestic life. <laughs> but I have no doubt his name would appear in any military directory. The army list of the last 40 years are here. Oh, these wonderful records should have been my constant study. Ah. And generals, Mallow, Maxburg, Mag, oh, what a ghastly name to have. Mark B. Miggs, Mons, Moncrief, <laughs> Lieutenant, 1840. Captain, Lieutenant Colonel, Colonel, General, 1869. Christian names. Ernest John. <laughs> I always told you my name was Ernest Brennan. <laughs> well, it is Ernest after all. I think it actually is Ernest. Yes, I remember now that the general's name was Ernest. I knew I had some particular reason for disliking the name. Ernest. I am Ernest. I have felt from the first that you could have no other name. <laughs> It's a terrible thing for a man to find out quite suddenly that all his life he's been speaking 
nothing but the truth. <laughs> can you ever forgive me? I can, but I feel you are sure to change. My own one, Letitia. <laughs> at last. Cecily, at last. Gwendolyn, at last. My nephew, you seem to be displaying signs of triviality. On the contrary, Aunt Augusta. I just realized for the first time in my life the vital importance of being earnest. 